From the Normandy invasion in June 1944 through to the German surrender in May 1945, thousands of Allied and German tanks and other armoured fighting vehicles were knocked out or abandoned on the battlefields of the Western Front. This film focuses on what happened to German armoured fighting vehicles that fell into Allied hands and answers the question of why so few German tanks are in existence today. When a German tank was knocked out by British or American fire or abandoned by its crew due to damage or lack of fuel, it wouldn't remain too long on the battlefield. German vehicles would be bulldozed off roads. Within days, special tank recovery crews with specialised vehicles would start to clear the wrecks, German and Allied. Due to the great weight of German tanks, more than one recovery vehicle was often used to drag a panzer from a ditch or a river. The US Army used the M32, a recovery vehicle based on the M4 Sherman tank, fitted with a 30-ton deadlift A-frame crane and winch. The British Army's version was the Sherman Armoured Recovery Vehicle Mark I. The Americans also used a few older M31 recovery vehicles based on the M3 Lee tank with a 30-ton crane. Another really useful piece of machinery was the M1 Wrecker which had a 10-ton lift capacity to tow or drag German vehicles away. At this point, some German tanks were marked for further investigation. The Allies were keen to get their hands on the latest German tanks, and these would be carefully marked to avoid scrapping, and taken away for trials and evaluation. The tank museums in Britain and America are full of German armoured vehicles saved in this manner and for this purpose. Some German tanks that were captured in running order were pressed into Allied service. For example, the French army had a Panther tank battalion during the last year of the war and for several years afterwards, and one of these tanks has survived. Fortunately, I've made films about the French and British Panthers. Links below in the description box. Do check them out. For the majority of run-of-the-mill German tanks and tank destroyers, they were dragged or transported to what were called primary assembly points, close behind the front lines. The PAPs were usually near railway sidings or road junctions for easy access. Here, two important jobs were completed. The first rather grim. Many of the vehicles would contain dead crewmen, and the human remains would be recovered for burial. All unexploded ordnance was taken out, from main gun ammunition to machine gun bullets and hand grenades. Once this was done, the wrecks could be sent back for further processing to special yards based on the type of vehicle, its weight, level of damage and so on. These facilities were called strip-out yards, usually established in a large field. Tank transporters would bring the wrecks in. Here the vehicles were stripped of their parts. Allied tanks, like the Sherman, would be cannibalized for spares, for example sub-assemblies, which could be sent to a supply pool for reissue. German equipment was all to be scrapped. These items ended up sorted into scrap piles. Sometimes the tank's hulls might be scrapped at the strip-out yards, but usually they were sent somewhere else to be chopped up. Many times, local civilian scrap merchants would buy German tanks from strip-out yards and store them for years, even decades, waiting for the price of scrap metal to rise. In this way, it was not uncommon to find rusting German tanks still in yards in the 1970s and 80s. A few have subsequently been bought by collectors and restored. A few may still be in forgotten and overgrown yards even today. For most German tanks, they were chopped up, and the scrap metal shipped to England for processing into new products. A few were used as gunnery targets on ranges just after World War II, and also ended up being scrapped later on. Another reason why some German tanks survived scrapping was because they were too awkward to get at, or literally out of sight. For example, submerged in a river or a bog, or in a location where recovery vehicles could not get access. A few of these have ended up restored in collections. World War II Allied tank types continued to serve on for years or even decades after the war in other conflicts, 
and production continued of many different types of vehicle. Production of German tanks pretty much halted in May 1945, so those nations that used captured German tanks as a sort of stopgap measure soon replaced them with Allied types, as spare parts became increasingly scarce. These tanks were then scrapped. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.